downtown New Orleans. A lot has happened with New Orleans since COVID. Today's video is more of a little life update uh, of me, yours truly. And um, yeah, I don't know where to begin. Oh, right. I had surgery on both of my eyes. Now I have two bionic eyes. I can now see right through people's BS. <laughs> oh man, that was uh, a bit stressful for me, but when I tell you my vision now is wildly, unbelievably, like 80K TV. It's it's weird, man. With the, the sharpness I can see distance is redonk a donk uh, My left eye is for closer, and it's adapting just fine. So, yay, that's all good. But as far as New Orleans, it's it's affecting a lot of us around here because the crime really has gotten off of the charts. I mean, we're having shootings on the interstate. Like, just, I'm not sure if it's road rage or they're just having fun. What they call fun, I have no idea. But a lot of my photo shoots um, are not downtown because people don't want to go down there. They're afraid, and whenever you have fear instilled in people, keep left. Yep, I'm gonna keep left. Uh, fear will always prevail, and uh, that's what COVID did. That's what the government making you stay home was through fear. You know, the fear of just driving downtown can get you shot. Come on, that's fear. It's a very weird time. Our police force is very small. You rarely, rarely see police cars on the street. Um, that's also why you don't feel safe. And it's, it's, I don't know, it's just a very weird time. Hopefully somebody will be elected that can um, fix these problems. Because um, they are fixable. They are fixable. You know, New Orleans is an amazing city, but if you live around here, Metairie, the out, you know, the suburbs outside of downtown New Orleans, um, it's just many things going on. Like it's a dark city. You know, the the lights are either not on or the ones that are on. I swear they're at like half power. It's just it's not convenient at all. Uh, to do what we used to do just a couple of years ago, you know, it's the first time in my 28 year career that I'm looking over my shoulder a lot more um, Than I ever have before in the past and that sucks man fear sucks So anyway, that's New Orleans. That's a small update Let me see my eyes are good. Oh, yeah, I had a chance to test the new Fuji um, XH2 or the S which one has the smaller the smaller file that's the one that we tested and the focusing was unbelievable it was very sticky meaning it found the eyes and it was like it wasn't letting go very cool um, but but if you're like me you own a Fuji X-T4 and you're like should I upgrade um, I'm kind of not right now I'm gonna wait and see what the X-T5 is doing and uh, let me stop vlogging while I'm driving. <laughs> Runs to the band room. That's my little drummer. <laughs> I mean, running.
I just got this email and I'm just kind of curious. Um, how would how would you respond to this personally? Okay. Uh, all right. So this this person emails me about an elopement here in New Orleans, and uh, I'm just curious. How would you respond to this? Your work is beautiful. I love your documentary style, especially since my fiance and I are a bit camera shy. Smiley face. We are on a very tight budget coming to coming to New Orleans from Baltimore. But we absolutely love Nola and had to find a way to celebrate our marriage in town. So much so that instead of a wedding registry for gifts, we are suggesting our family and friends to donate to one of three local New Orleans community organizations. Which sounds cool enough. We are doing a petite ceremony and reception at this venue on a weekday and only have the venue from 3.30 to 10.30, so they need me for like four hours. No wedding party, small family, short and sweet ceremony, and no need for polished edited photos, just the digital negatives as my fiance is a photographer himself. Please let me know if we could possibly work something out for a dollar amount. Please let me know if there is any way we can work something out. I very much appreciate your consideration, thank you. How would you, how would you approach us? Like, how do you feel as, as a working photographer? If you are a working photographer, you know we we're, we're not customary to letting go of our raw images, um, because it's a personal process and it's also a case of ownership, which is mine. And just in case uh, clients don't understand that, even when you do get a copy of your wedding images or your event images or whatever it is the photographer still holds the rights for ownership we are releasing a copy to you for print or publication or whatever it is that we state in our contract photographer always owns the rights uh period anyway i'm just curious how would would you respond to this yeah so friday comes have a little baby, six month old baby to photograph in the studio in the morning. I go home for lunch. I was getting uh, four new tires on my truck, so my father-in-law brought me home. I took one bite of my lunch and my cell phone rings and it's a uh, person that I work with in the commercial world. She's a DMC, destination management company. They're basically like the wedding planners for the commercial world. Um, she calls me, she goes, hey, interesting request, but um, how did your day look today? And I'm like, I, I, I can move something if I need to, why, what's going on? She says, my client from New York on private jet flew in, about 60 people, they have a whole day planned um, for today, and we're at the first location, and she says, um, maybe it'd be a good idea if we had a photographer. I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. She goes, yeah. I said, okay. I said, well, let me see if I can move my appointment. I said, uh, what are the times? She goes, well, they end at 10.30 tonight and basically as fast as you can get here. I'm like, oh, snap. Okay. So um, that's what happened. So out the blue, I had a nine hour job from a phone call and I was on site downtown in 45 minutes. That was unbelievable. Great people, lots of fun. I'm going to show you those images uh, in a few, but man, when life is good and life is wonderful and it's providing business for you, which provides money and stability and all that good stuff, you know, life is really grand. Um, but I cannot express this enough. Those who are in your life that love you and appreciate you for you, that's your true friends and family. You know what I mean? So. If you're surrounding yourself by negative people, you probably have a lot of negative 
outcomes in your life. Um, yeah, don't do that. <laughs> Keep the good people in your life, man. All right, there's more. Bro, check out my basil. Bad boy basil. That's amazing. Check it out. And my tomatoes are not growing. I got flowers, but they're not growing. Look how big this tomato is. Look at this. Look, it's growing. It's just not producing. My cucumbers, on the other hand, are producing. Uh, do we do this one? Or do we do this one? He's not ready yet. He's not ready. Ah, uh, anymore? You gotta search the vine sometimes. They kind of blend in. So, how cool is this? How are you kids out there learning about growing stuff? This is how it starts off. See the little yellow flower tip on the front? Because it flowers first, and then the fruit comes after. And then, you get this. They grow. See? Little flowers start to happen. And when you see the flowers, you're like, hey, fruit is on the way. So, check it out. We're gonna, how can I show you this? <laughs> this looks weird. Anyway, this is the cucumber that I just picked. And it's gonna be dinner tonight. Jack, I, 
figured I would grab the snare drum from work and uh, bring it home. Nobody else is here for a while, so uh, his room is carpeted. He'll be okay. Neighbors shouldn't be complaining. <laughs> uh, anyway, so it's a photography channel, right? So yes, all those images you saw was Fuji X-T4. Uh, most likely my 16 to 55 2.8 lens. It's just my big go-to lens, but I have to be honest, man. If, if you were to give me one lens to go fo to go fo to go photograph an entire event with just one lens i really think i would just take the 16 millimeter 1.4 let, let me tell you something the difference between 2.8 and 1.4 in an f-stop that is two stops of light man that's a lot of light when you need it so when you're in that darker room of, of an event that you're covering 2.8 feels like 4.0 just does man I always wind up running back to my bag grabbing my 16 and tell myself dear Jesus don't shoot past 2.0 <laughs> 1.4 is nice but yeah wow anyway stay focused on your dreams I'm so glad you're here yes yes I'm back let's do this right peace